I'm sure we'll have Brandon join momentarily. Um, okay, yeah, welcome everyone to Product AMA. This is an exciting one coming off of shipping week last week, so pushed a lot of stuff. Um, if you checked the, the pinned tweet on the Zeta Chain feed, I think you have a sense of what this riddle, this emoji riddle means. So uh, first we shipped fuel, uh, which will, we'll, and we'll cover all of these developments. Fuel, and then the first iteration of Zeta AI, new staking page in Hub, then of course the Polygon mainnet announcement, which a lot of people guessed beforehand, uh, as well as the, the meme tokens. So Pepe and, and Sheeb are now ZRC20 tokens on Zeta Chain. Uh, so yeah, let, let's talk about it. We have uh, uh, Brandon and Joseph both leading product for Zeta Chain. Um, and also a reminder, you can share your product questions in the comments here as well as your EVM address, and we'll send out some rewards for very good, relevant product questions. Um, so let's kick it off. Um, last week, we announced Fuel. Uh, what exactly is this feature? How has it been uh, in production the past week? Yeah, Joseph, you wanna take that one? Um, yeah, you, you can start, uh, I'll fill in after you. Sure. So we launched Fuel last week, towards the beginning of the week. And um, this is basically the first iteration of what we are considering instant rewards. Uh, you can also view it as the first actual perk for status holders in our hub. XP program. So the way the program works is by having a certain type of status, or even for new users, you have access to fuel, which is this perk where you can every day of the week, go in to Zeta hub and claim some Zeta. And the Zeta can be used for anything, but uh, at least the primary use case is so that you can basically refuel your wallet and have the gas Zeta to continue transacting as you need to, whether it's XP activities or just using the chain. Um, a lot of people are continually doing XP activities or trading or, you know, buying keys on some app and that costs gas at the end of the day. And this is a way for you by also, you know, helping the XP program grow and it's like data set and all of that get rewarded instantly and having the gas to do what you need to do on the chain. Um, again, this is a first instant reward uh, we're working on designing this system where you, by holding status, have access to this whole slew of perks, if you will. Um, and yeah, so we launched last week. I think we've hit around 80 or 90,000, and that might have updated since the last time I looked at the data. Um, unique users engaging with Fuel and the, the number of users who can access the program is limited by the amount of Zeta in the fuel tank right now, um, which is about a thousand Zeta a day. Um, green users have access to the majority of rewards, or they have at least claimed the majority of rewards so far because they have access to a higher drip as well as the drip for lower tier users like the gold um, rose gold, silver, black status users. So um, if you're green, you have access to 0 0.05 Zeta drips every 30 minutes um, with the current parameters, and that can add up pretty quickly. 
if you're going in and claiming every day. Uh, as we kind of understand the data more, uh, we'll work on scaling this, also adding new types of rewards. And that's something Joseph is also looking into, like how we morph this program and mechanism around even doing XP activities, not just an open trip for status holders um, and a bunch of cool mechanisms to make XP and the whole program in general on Hub more fun. Very nice. Yeah, and most of the tank is going to existing status holders. Um, the, the numbers are on the lower side for new XP enrollments. Um, interesting fact. And I think you just touched on this. So the, the feature of fuel is going to be extended to subsidize specific um, XP activities. Like it's going to be a more um, robust feature than just a basic drip. Is, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Nice. And um, anything else that we're learning so far? One week in production, like uh, we know from testnet days and just Web3 in general, there's quite a lot of bot activity. And so um, how Zeta Hub is trying to mitigate that and make sure that the drip goes in the right hands. Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, so so like um, since, since we launched, uh, the tank is getting... Um, let's say emptied the first few days the tank were, were, were getting emptied in like uh, two hours and then uh, we realized that now it's getting emptied in one hour and the first question we ask ourselves like why you know like it went from two hours to one hour of course like one of the the easiest way to think about it is going to be like yeah things has gotten automated people are like claiming the rewards in the tank in an automated way and that was also like in a sense um, a good portion of why it accelerated but at the same time, we, we saw like an increase in number of uh, uh, unique addresses claiming. So maybe the word has spread out and like more users now are claiming because they realize that they could claim. And at the same time, um, at the same time, like some stuff got automated. So on our side, like one of the things we're doing is we w w are working with like uh, our security and uh, DevOps team to set out like some kind of like challenges for the bots like Cloudflare term style, et cetera, that put a certain throttle on the number of requests a certain IP could make. So in these type of scenarios, like if someone is making a lot of requests from the same IPs or like uh, Cloudflare term style uh, uh, kind of like think that these requests are coming from a bot and they have like a really good, uh, let's say, scoring mechanism, uh, these are going to sub the request so like we're doing our best to turn uh, to keep like at least these rewards for our our users and uh, looking at the data it's it's going great um so we launched exactly one week ago uh like uh, last tuesday and we already have 155,000 claims and this is like a very big number in, in six days already um so, so yeah, uh, I, I think, you know, like on the number side, on the data side, it's looking good. It's looking promising. The number of drips is increasing and the number of unique users is increasing. So as long as the number of unique users is increasing, I think, you know, we're doing a good job at like minimizing the impact of, of bots. Yep. And this um, <clears throat> reward, daily reward pool is separate from the 10 million Zeta prize pool as part of XP, which we're going to update on in the next session in Discord following this. Um, so yeah, it's it's a way to increase utility of being an XP member and drive more frequent continuous rewards. Um, so that, that's the goal. There are a couple questions here. Uh, plans to bring in meme coins. Uh, when will we start um, something like pump.fund fun on a Zeta chain? Um, which anyone can build. Uh, so let's just jump to news at the end of last week, the meme token whitelisting, uh, Pepe, Sheeb, some other uh, stables are now whitelisted ZRC20 assets on Zeta chain. Uh, what, what's the significance here? What does that mean? 
Sure. Yeah. So you guys might have seen on governance and then also posting the product updates end of last week. So at a high level, Zeta Chain as a network has enabled support for four new assets. So three on Ethereum, Dai, Shiba Inu, and Pepe. Uh, and for Shib and, and Pepe in particular, like for this question and, and meme tokens, it's kind of a nod to what Zeta Chain enables. Like a, a lot of the holders of Pepe or Shiba Inu are primarily trading on uh, CEXs and by enabling these meme coins to be traded on Zeta Chain or dApps on Zeta Chain, now holders of this, these tokens have liquidity against Bitcoin. Um, they can trade across any chain that we support. And that just enables a lot of things. You could even build games that use Pepe or Shibinu as a payment or reward uh, for your users and a bunch of fun things like that. And, you know, on top of, I guess, more serious, if you would call them that, tokens like DAI, which is a stable coin, or Polygon, um, like POL or, or Matic or whatever you want to call it at this point. Uh, this just adds to the unified liquidity state of chain is working towards where you can have any asset and you can use it with any app or, you know, trade it against any other asset, lend it, borrow it, anything like that. Um, so this is really just the beginning. And um, yeah, I think meme coins are ultimately a pretty important part of the ecosystem. Um, they're very accessible just from a perception standpoint and uh, by making it more accessible in general or bringing access to it, uh, that just goes in line with Zeta Chain's mission to bring crypto to more people in general. Yes, and in the governance forum, there are guidelines for whitelisting new ZRC20 assets and what the ecosystem looks for. Um, not opening the floodgates uh, at this point in uh, Zeta Chain's life. And then um, actually two weeks ago, we raised liquidity caps on ZRC20s. And uh, over time, we'll, we'll continue to raise those as uh, apps need more liquidity. Okay, uh, Zeta AI was the second shipment last week. Uh, I guess even before talking about what is Zeta AI? What do you guys, how do you guys think about AI's role in crypto and user experience? What's kind of hype um, versus like real uh, utility and impact on crypto that you're seeing? Yeah, I, I can take this and maybe you guys also have opinions i i think for in, in general ai i mean it obviously brings a lot of interesting use cases to products in general and i mean that's why you're seeing so much investment in ai products for for crypto specifically uh and you can see this in the the launch and goals of Zeta AI, but I, at least how I see it, AI or crypto kind of balances AI. Um, AI is this often, or like at least how it is now, very uh, centralized uh, data sets, products. It's kind of a black box for most users and crypto is uh, like a fully transparent ledger verifiable um, like when you when you when you're able to put 
especially like identity or some sort of verification on chain, um, you can do things that are not contestable. So um, at least how I see AI and crypto playing out is they, they sort of balance each other out um, in a sense. But uh, for use cases like putting data for AI models on chain, I haven't really seen a compelling iteration of that, like having like LLMs on chain, but for, for Zeta AI, the, the thinking is AI can be used as an agent on behalf of a user to do things on chain. Um, this is more of like a UX improvement, but you can see also it evolving into agents acting on their own or at least acting on the intents of a user. So you see a lot of these intent protocols basically saying, give me what do you want to do on chain? Uh, and we will do them. Now you can have a LLM powered solution that can do that in a way. Um, and with Zeta chain giving access to all chains that agent can do anything across yeah. any chain. So you could see things like robo investors, portfolio managers doing very well with some sort of AI powered agent. And that's where Zeta AI wants to go. Um, for now, the kind of initial version in docs is trained on Zeta chain and knowledge around Zeta chain in general. So it can give that power to developers, especially to learn about Zeta chain and develop things. But the next evolution will be something like the agents I described. Um, to me, that's one of the more compelling approaches, but of course it's, it's very broad. Uh, it, it's hard to really say what will succeed unless people are trying things and failing and, and seeing what succeeds. Yeah, it's hard to make sense of, uh, but I agree for my research. It's like the, the case for AI on chain doesn't really, uh, resonate more so user puts an input into an LLM and the actual transactions happen on chain. And that's where an omni chain L1 becomes pretty interesting. Uh, Joseph, uh, any insights here on what um, was implemented last week with Zeta AI? So um, there, the first iteration is available in Zeta Docs. And I think what's more interesting is what the article talks about uh, with respect to Zeta Hub and um, being able to talk to an agent to do all sorts of omni-chain stuff um, and execute XP activities. Yeah. And things uh, to share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, as you said, uh, the first thing we did with ZAI is to uh, start at least implementing it in docs. And uh, it's still experimental. It's still the first version, beta version, and we're learning a lot about it. Um, so if users like developers, they want to try it, you can go ahead to to uh, uh, Zeta chain docs, and then you could you could find it in the search box. And we've implemented it uh, in a similar way to a lot of like the developer, the best developer products out there, embedded directly in the search functionality. And the first version of this is, is simply as like everyone is using, you know, like the language interfaces where you ask a question and the AI is gonna respond with a text. And so it's an interactive in a sense that you could uh, uh, use it to learn about Zeta chain. You could use it to learn about the different complex concept of like, you know, like uh, universal apps, uh, etc. And so this is kind of like the first uh, iteration embedded in dogs. Now we also wanted want to iterate on the dogs version to make it more flexible. Uh, for us, the first like uh, in the first implementation, we made sure that the model is really restrained to Zeta chain. Like if you ask it. Uh, why the moon is white, it's not going to respond. So like we kind of like trained the AI to specifically answer questions related to Zeta chain. 
and that has put like a little bit of limitation on like the interactivity between the user and uh, and the uh, model. So we heard this a little bit from the first developers that they are using it that uh, in certain places it's a little bit limiting. And this is because we are trying to limit the answers to just like the Zeta chain. So we over limited the model if you want. So now we're gonna iterate on this. We're gonna make it more flexible, but at the same time, the most important thing is to keep it just relevant to Zeta chain and like in a secure way that we don't reveal, we don't wanna reveal like information that you know might, might uh, cause problems to developers or users down the road. Um, after the docs, we are embedding the AI model in uh, Zeta Hub. And this is where it starts to get really interesting. Um, so, and of course it's gonna take time because like the security, let's say measurement at this point could be like a little bit higher. Um, but when we embed it in, in Zeta Hub, the really interesting thing is that uh, the first question we can ask is how can uh, the AI start like teaching users how to use the hub? So if that's, you know, like a first question, then, you know, we're going to train the model on like the different things you could do on the hub. And like, of course, like the model should understand that and then it help users like do it. Then the second question could be, can we, um, can, can the user ask the, the AI to do something for them or at least generate the, of course, the wallet uh, signature, uh, right, transaction. So like, can I send a message to the AI and say, stake five, uh, five Zeta tokens with, um, I don't know, Figment validator. And then the AI is going to go to the stake page, you know, like imagine and the flow <laughs> doesn't have to do this flow, but imagine the AI is like going to the stake page, selecting the validator, inputting five uh, uh, Zeta tokens, and then generating the transaction. And then the users will look at the transaction and sign it in their wallet. And so if we can do this like one simple task, let's say, then we can start building on, on top of it to uh, to the users like telling the model, go swap, um, I don't know, uh, go send uh, from Polygon, Sommatic to Zeta chain, go transfer Pepe from Ethereum to uh, Zeta chain, go swap on this application, you know, some like DAI to USDC. And this is like where we start like uh, adding like a little bit more, uh, let's say a different task or like different functionalities that the model could do. And if we could do that within the hub, then you could start imagining that the user using this model, uh, the functionality, so like the stuff that they could do is like unlimited. Every time that the chain, you know, like supports a new chain, let's say like in the future Solana, then we, like this model could, could do like now unlock like more stuff that they could do on Solana, right? Like send tokens from Solana to Zeta chain or from Zeta chain to Solana, and then use this token to stake, to add it to an LP, to swap, to do all sorts of different things. And once we have those, this is where like the long-term vision comes in, which is like a little bit far. But the moment we have those like uh, things being kind of like these models, uh, are let's say uh, contr not controlled but you know like initiated the word yeah the word is initiated so imagine these models are initiated uh, by users like the user is telling them go do this at this time swap this token to that token the moment we have this then you can move towards um, more automated stuff where as a trader as an investor like I'm as a like really professional trader I can write like a script that controls these models that execute trades ex execute swaps uh, across all different chains, like at, at any time. Um, and this is where it starts like getting more and more interesting where we have this like uh, all chain, you know, like universal agent. Um, and I'll stop here. <laughs> yep, claim by staking rewards at this time during the day, swap it into Bitcoin, all sorts of stuff that you could create. This is like the chain abstraction vision to me. Uh, and I think education becomes really important because you actually have to look at what you're signing always. Um, and yeah, uh, in fact, for phase one, just this simple AI in Zeta Docs, you'll notice it's kind of like not as smart as chat GPT uh, four because um, it, it's designed to be more straightforward. If you're developing an app and you need a contract address, like need to make sure that you you get the right information. Yeah, and one, um, and one thing, yeah. just uh, based on what you just said, like you need to understand what you're signing. Also, like there could be a way, like I think 
if if like users can copy paste sometimes you know like what they need to sign and like the ai model could like explain what that means that also like is is sometimes good like a lot of times we don't really understand all the like the abstract <laughs> letters and signs in in, in uh, transactions like a lot of users like don't really understand what it means so also it could be like something uh, important like uh, if you could copy paste and the model is explaining to you that 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 exactly what it means signing this transaction yeah in fact someone the other week proposed building a really simple zeta scan explorer because Etherscan, all of these explorers could be quite technical. So I think there's an opportunity for someone to build that. Uh, Joseph, you mentioned layer twos and, and Richard, I see your question here. Uh, or this is more about the prospect of a layer two on top of Zeta chain. Uh, that's um, interesting. What's the question? Um, are there plans to participate in the development of new blockchain technologies like scalable L2 protocols? Uh, my quick reaction is it, something like this wouldn't really make sense right now. Um, Dennis, I know we've we've talked about this, and uh, I'm not sure if you could speak. You had a dental procedure today, but uh, if you can speak, any thoughts about um, L2s, L3s on top of Zeta chain and in the long term future? Yeah, so I mean, to me, L2s and L3s are all blockchains, right? Like, I, I know there is a distinction, but at the end of the day, it's either a blockchain or not, right? It's either a distributed ledger state machine, right? A virtual machine that runs contract, or, or, or it's not. So like building new L2s on top of Zeta chain doesn't sound like a particularly exciting idea to me personally, just because I think there are other solutions out there that are built specifically for this. I think, I still think that like building uh, tools that do uh, one thing well, or at least like a handful of things very well is better than like being everything for everyone. Right, so Zeta Chain is this interoperability hub. It's the platform for, for apps that can talk to anything and send tokens and receive messages and mint NFTs and like do all these things on all all the chains. But it's not necessarily the best platform for building uh, other L twos or L threes on top of. I mean, just just my opinion. I don't know if that answers the question. But... Yeah, helpful. I and what makes. Um, more sense and what Zeta Chain's mission is, is um, connecting all the blockchains, including L2s. And, and that's what we did with Polygon end of last week. So you can now see in Hub the tokens that you hold on Polygon under wallet holdings. You can uh, send assets. You can build apps that orchestrate Matic with Bitcoin and other assets from other chains. And that's like pretty exciting. So um, Brandon, Joseph, what, what, what's the, uh, the news here? Um, what, what does Polygon support mean um, for developers and users? Yeah, I mean, for Polygon users, it's bringing access to the entire connectivity layer that Zeta Chain already has provided since launch. Um, so, you know, converting your Polygon assets to Bitcoin and vice versa. Um, as new chains are added, this only multiplies or compounds. Like there are more connections you can make, um, more liquidity, more access to things. Um, and then on the flip side for, you know, non polygon users. Now you also have an easy route to use those or use polygon. Um, and then as Zeta chain adds support for new chains, again, the, the possibilities kind of compound. Um, and then for a developer, the cool thing 
is again you you still just need to deploy in one place and your app can have access to or can be accessed by users on any chain so um, it's not increasing complexity like uh, it might for some other interoperability protocols for a developer um, you're still implementing the same sort of hook or you know handler for cross-chain deposits or, or actions but your app is basically uh, future proof in a way where polygon is added your app basically does not need to change at all you don't need to deploy a new contract on polygon per se it's all just kind of built in so it's it's lowering the barriers for users to access all of the chains and and apps in general and then also for developers it's basically adding no more friction but giving you access to you know polygon has eight plus million users now you have access to them and you can start building community and and users and retaining users or bringing them utility with that entire new set so um yeah it, it's very exciting it is the first new mainnet chain to be added support for since the launch of zeta chains mainnet so that's a huge milestone but you can also see really really active development in in github like on the node software to uh, explore support for solana ton ibc uh, to name a few of the key ones yes and github issue for base i believe um so more is coming and if you're og you might remember polygon was actually turned on on testnet um, and now we got it on mainnet Joseph, new staking page. What what's what's new? Is this more of a design overhaul or any new features um, to talk about? Um, yeah, uh, like the most exciting thing about this new staking page is like the new design, the UI UX. I think it's looking super clean. Uh, it's like uh, super simple. A lot of times, like a lot of the staking pages are, you know, like uh, overloaded with information and complicated and like uh, it's hard to like just navigate through it. And I think with this like new staking page is like really looking very shiny, very new, very cool. Um, about new features, I don't think there's a lot of new features, you know, like staking is pretty much straightforward. You have some tokens, you want to delegate them to a certain validator and you want to claim your rewards and maybe you want to re-delegate from one validator to another and at some point you might even want to undelegate some of your tokens so uh, you know like these are kind of like the main things you could do with staking uh, so and that's like we, we kept it simple and stupid but like we really improved the ui um, and and uh, i think there's some kind of like questions from the community that you got uh, jonathan right about like uh, some kind of like iterations on the staking page yeah um a lot of feedback on on everything always one on the staking page was about randomization of uh the order of validators yeah um so for now this is like uh, not uh, something implemented yet and the user who suggested that they're pretty on spot i would say so yeah, that's something we could like uh, iterate on in the next iterations where we add like some kind of uh, uh, ability for users to even sort uh, the table and like however they want. Maybe they want to sort it and uh, validators that they have the most stake or the validators that they have the less stake or like by commission or by uptime. So we could give this ability to the users um, to, to really like uh, order the list and, and however they, they, they see fit. Maybe they want to filter out uh, validators who are jailed. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, like it's going to take a couple, couple of days at least before we iterate on this. Nice. And speaking of feedback, there is a new um, XP activity rating feature, which is actually like a big deal because there's feedback in Discord and Twitter and to the projects directly about um, app experiences, but this is an effort for Zeta Hub to collect 
uh, in a more standard way. So um, what does that look like now and where where is where are these ratings going? Um, yeah, so so uh, the the idea behind it is is really that uh, it's two folds. One from the user perspective, and the second one is from the uh, team perspective. So we have teams who are, you know, launching these XP activities on the hub. Like for example, um, I don't know, like Adifinus, let's say. So Adifinus, they have uh, an XP activity to swap from this token to the other token, right? So that's the team who is creating the activity. And then on the other side, you have the users, uh, our community members who are completing these uh, activities. And so um, ex like the rating uh, of these activities is kind of like the bridge between the user and the team. You can think about it in this way. So now when users are completing the activities, they could rate the activity itself. And only the user who completed the activity could rate it. And so this could protect us and the teams from being rated by random users. Like anyone who just signed up to XP could go on and just like attack any activity or rated. So in kind of like, um, like a soft protection, you can think about is that only the users who completed this activity could rate this activity. And then what's happening is that these users, they are like rating these activities in a way to let us know what they like and what they don't like. So that's the, uh, that's kind of like one way for the users to like share uh, quantitative feedback with us that would let us understand like their preferences and use that for like in the future to to take it in the direction where you know it's it's bringing them more value for the users. At the same time, this data is like really important to the teams uh, because like it's really hard sometimes to get direct uh, data about you know like uh, how users are liking your product. And so we take this data, we go to the teams and we show them that, you know, you are um, uh, a DEX and you have like a DEX activity. So you are DEX number one, but you also have DEX number two and DEX number two has like a very similar activity to yours, but you are rated three over five, DEX two is rated 4.5 over five. And, you know, like this is something that you might want to take a look into to see like where in your product you have these problems, what can you improve, uh, how can you, you know, like resonate more with the community members. And this is where like it really start adding a lot of value to the developers and you can think about it in a way as well as i'm i am let's say also a dex usually i have 4.5 uh, stars rating over five stars and then i launch a new feature and then i create a new xp activity for this specific feature and now suddenly my rating is dropping to four so i know that this specific feature that i launched it didn't really you know like resonate well or it didn't work well so I know I got direct feedback, uh, quantitative feedback from the community member about this feature. Or, you, or the opposite could happen. Like I had 4.5 and now suddenly my average is like 4.6. 4 and so I know that, you know, this feature was a killer feature and it's working well. And so in a sense, it's going to help really the teams a lot in like building and, you know, getting this insight. It's going to get uh, give the uh, users ability to really shape, you know, the future. And as of today, we already, I think... Um, have uh, around 70,000 uh, rating, which is also amazing. Like about one week we have launched this and like already 70,000 70, rating is happening. And uh, we have rating on all the XP activities features right now. And we, we could see like a rich data set uh, already building in front, in front of us. Any plans to make that public uh, or are we still in kind of a data gathering phase yeah like the, the vision for for xp is like all the data at some point is like public on chain so you know like the universal data layer uh, of course like before we share the data like make them public we really need to understand we need really need to test their integrity their you know like accuracy etc um, so like when we are launching these like new new features uh, there's going to be always like a certain uh, period at the beginning where we are learning from it, testing iteration. And then we, we feel confident, like we really know that this data is robust, you know, like it's accurate, etc. We move to the next phase in XP where it's becoming like open uh, on-chain data sets. Yeah. And then uh, people 
well, this can help inform the reward distributions for something like our, the RFP process. So if users really like one particular app, then it's in all of our interest as participants at Zeta Chain to allocate a higher reward and invest in that app for the longer term. So, wow, yeah, very exciting. Um, I think we covered everything with shipping week and we're coming to the end here. So reminder, we're gonna jump to Discord and review updates on the XP program and reward distribution. Um, yeah, tell us what you thought of shipping week last week, if it was fun and um, any feedback on the ways that we deliver content like we wrote a bunch of blogs last week but maybe you want to see more like short clips and demos of stuff and um yeah let us know your feedback in the comments and discord and really pumped to keep building i know the market has been kind of crazy um the thesis for crypto industry from my perspective and i think a lot of you share this is that um the the, the thesis is the same uh, and certainly at Zeta Chain, um, Omni Chain platform, building the universal blockchain is still the the long term goal. So thanks for being a part of it. And yeah, let's jump to Discord. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.